Today, you're gonna learn how to create a foggy forest in Cinema 4D with forester trees, but not quite forester. So um, maybe you've seen David Ariev's tutorials on forester and Cinema 4D and all that and that taught me my entire workflow with this. So I would highly suggest going and checking that out and I do not want to take away from the sheer thoroughness that he goes into with that. And I'm using that workflow from that to bring you how to create a foggy forest in Cinema 4D and Octane. These scenes will be available on my Selfie, so you do not need Forrester for it. The trees would have been made editable in those scenes. The original scene, the tutorial scene, and a few other scenes will be there, so be sure to check them out. Without further ado, let's get into the tutorial. Okay, so in a fresh scene here, I've got the two trees I used in the other scene. I only used two trees, I don't want to go over the top. I actually didn't even use a grass texture. I just filled filled the, the landscape with uh, trees because I didn't want to add any unnecessary detail that would slow render times as they were already quite high. So in both textures, uh, if you're familiar, I'm, I'm sure you've seen David's tutorial. Um, it, he kind of approached it a little bit like this where you plug the image texture into the transmission and you put that in a mix and then you create another one which should be plugged in there like that and then you create a mix between them both and uh, of course this one being glossy and then it creates a pretty cool effect and light can pass through the leaves and all that jazz but we're not going to go over that so um, those are, are, are my trees set up uh, now the first thing I would do is I would set up the landscape so I initially tried this with a plane with a noise with a deformer on it uh, a displacer and using a noise in that uh, and it just didn't give enough of a landscape look so I ended up going for a landscape of course hitting borders at sea level and then playing with it till I got something I was uh, pretty happy with um, and I didn't worry too much about the segments either of course I kind of liked the whole effect of just one big hill um, so I'd maybe go for something a bit like this like that so we just have one kind of really, really big hill. Um, because then, of course, if you go for something uh, like this, you can imagine you're gonna have to bring, for the scale to work, you're gonna have to bring the size of the trees way down. So for this, I feel like um, it kind of works uh, like this. And I will use the same HDRI, I will try and take the same approach. So the HDRI I used was a free one from HDRI Haven. And it was Tiber Island and 8K. Well, I f the final render was 16K, but we'll use 8K just now. So, of course, what we'll just do next is I did use Octane Scatter. So, we'll just drop in an Octane Scatter here. We'll put the two trees in. And we'll pop the landscape in here. I did use a vertex map, but we won't worry about that until a bit later when, when we've got our camera set up and we only want to render what's in the view of our camera. Um, so you bring the normal line here so all the trees are straight, maybe mess it up a little bit. Um, and then we'll drop in a camera straight away, we won't mess about. And I used a pretty big lens, because if you look at the render I did, you can't really take photos of trees like that, being that close. Uh, <coughs> so we'll just whip about here and we'll drop in our daylight in a second. Um, now, I actually did a thing where I didn't just use the daylight, which was interesting, so um, I think I'd kind of like to be looking at them from about here. I'll try to set up a similar view, something a bit like this. And then if we play with the sky, I know what bit it was I had, and I did actually mess with the scale of the sky as well. Um, To get the look that I wanted. So something like that. And then we'll drop in the daylight here. We'll not turn on mix sky texture yet. We'll just turn that on just for simplicity actually. Uh, and if we just find the sun, oh there it is. We'll just get it in view. Okay, and then rotate it just to kind of wear turn the size up. Oh, 
I'm gonna bump up the amount of trees to about 1600 just so they fill out a little bit more. And we will use some noises and stuff in a little bit on that uh, to make sure that they cover everything. So this is already looking quite similar, which I like. The lighting trick that I did, I will go over once I've fixed this to daylight. Because um, the daylights can just cause a huge amount of fireflies on me, which would get it in the sun over here. But I'm not trying to be too thorough about this. It might be a longer tutorial than usual, but um, I'm not trying to go over every fine detail where the approaches I want. And the approach I want to take is to show you how I, I built the foggy forest look because it was a pretty hard thing to grasp at first actually, I didn't think it would be, but I live around a lot of forests that look like this in Scotland, so um, when you see them every day, uh, literally out of every window in my house I can look at one, uh, I was quite eager to make one and it's very similar trees to this uh, as well, I could have went to the extent and found the actual trees that it is as well, uh, but I didn't go quite that far. Um, I'm going to leave the sun there. I In, in the initial one, um, for duplicate this, I did like to have the sun kind of in the scene. Which is probably a result of this. Bring that around like that. What I'll do is I'll set up a camera and then see what kind of approach that so a bit blue like that. Yeah, so that, that looks fine. I know I did take away a bit of the orange of the sun, because uh, sometimes it's just too much. Um, I prefer it to be a little bit more white. And we'll drop a LUT in here, because we've always got to work in LUTs. I think this was the LUT I worked with on the original scene. Um, so it's something like a little bit like that. Um, okay, so I'm going to set up the vertex map. Um, because then this 1600 trees will be all focused on our view in front of us. So if we hit F2 and we go to perspective and we look at where the camera is, I'm just going to kind of mark this field. So I was doing that with my hand then, but you can't see my hand. So if you can see my mouse, just um, sometimes it doesn't record my mouse, apparently. Um, just up the right side of the camera field here, I'm going to take it up to. <coughs> so, if we hit C on this and make it editable, and we select just maybe about this amount here, just like that. We go Shift C, set vertex, set vertex weight, and use 100 on that. And then Octane Scatter. I give vertex map in there, and then as you can see, all our trees are just on that one bit. <laughs> Easy enough to do. And then render time is saved. La di da di da. Um, I'm still going to put this to not 200 but 2000. Um, and then in the scale, we'll drop in a noise here. Uh, just add a little, little bit of realism. Um, if we maybe set this to turbulence, and set it to about 500. And mess with it a little bit like that. Let me go back to normal noise actually. I want a very little amount of variation. Yeah, something like that. And um, I think what I actually did in the original scene is I had the landscape a lot smaller. Um, which is why I got away with about 1600 trees. Um, so I'll just keep taking them up until. I think the smart thing to do here would be to add in grass. And then you don't have to worry about that filler bit. But I really wasn't about that approach. <laughs> just for, for render time, honestly. But the look I got with the light shining through the trees, of course, the daylight was not providing that. So what did I do? I had an octane light way behind the landscape like this. We just angle this so it's kind of hitting in the same direction the sun is. And um, we can turn off the visibility here. And we'll bring it up a bit more. Till it's down. Just so it's really hitting through all the trees. I also added a fall off map. And so that's a thousand. I think the light was pretty close because it was I was trying to get it through as much of the trees as I could. 
um, but as you can see that light really it changes the, the vibe of the whole scene completely um, maybe just keep pumping that up yeah that was definitely more of the vibe and uh, I changed the temperature to match the sun a little bit uh, it was around somewhere around 3000 I think uh, just so I had a bit of a, a warm stink because I didn't like the natural at all being white um, so that's how I got the really really nice uh, scatter there through the trees was using the octane light um, which honestly changed the scene completely for for, for me as soon as I learned that I was like oof it's amazing so it does the fog you're probably wondering about the fog i'm not gonna go over trying to fill in those gaps in the trees because that was just that it was a little process that i did at the end um but surely at this point you, you know what to do to get rid of this. Uh, so the fog um this might slow my computer a bit because this computer isn't the fastest but if we bring in a fog volume here and this did take a little bit of fiddling with to get the way I wanted. Now, if you don't notice, you're going to have to go up in the sphere here. And then the fog will be bound to the sphere. So I did that. I kind of did something a bit like this. And then if you come in the volume and you hit cloud one, and in here, it just takes a little bit of messing about with. Come in the medium, bring the density down a little bit, bring the volume step length down a lot, not too much, but a lot. These should be fine, you bring the size editor down a little bit, I turned up the edge feather a lot as well, but on the display type, uh, what did I do? Was it lines I changed? Yeah, it was lines, I changed it to lines. Um, I felt like it helped me see it a bit better. And I just wanted to sit over a few of the trees, because looking at Scottish fog a lot of the time, I do know what it tends to look like. Um, every morning, just lovely fog, it's brilliant. Um, it was the noise I messed with more. That was too big. That was down to about 200. And the contrast was way higher. There we go. Let that resolve itself a little bit. Yeah, there we go. Something a little bit like that. Um, you can have fog covering the whole thing. I was going to try and use it to make some clothes as well, but I didn't really want to go over that. Um, I think this is Octane Scatter. Let's just try and um, do that and fill in all our trees here. And uh, right, 5,000 is apparently way too much. So, where were we at? Two and a half? Let's try three and a half. There we are, that's a bit better. It looks realistic. You don't want to bombard it with too many trees. I'm not going to go over the grass texture because it's just way too much and I did manage to get away without using it um, in the original scene. Um, maybe get away with a bit more bloom here on the sun. I really like seeing the sun. Um, I do actually think a bit more glare might be nice. Not that much. Yeah, maybe something like that. And then, yeah, grade it a little bit. I want to say, if you ever think my renders have a look which you struggle to uh, get, I just, I don't really grade my images, I just work with LUTs and then leave it at that. Um, I find grading a bit tough. incompetent, I guess. Uh, just for, for renders, now we have, I used to, but since we've had the ability to just work with LUTs straight in the scene and change the exposure and the gamma, and I used to grade a lot when, in earlier versions of Octane, a few years ago, around 2017, but also just when I was using standard render, because uh, you just couldn't work like this. So uh, I graded a lot then. Um, in one of the other scenes, I. Sorry if I banged the mic there. <laughs> uh, in one of the other scenes, I did add a second light. Um, because the first one wasn't scattering through the trees enough. And I wanted to make sure all the trees got that light. Um, so I did a second one of it like that and made sure it got through all of them. Um, which you also can do, because uh, if I bring that all the way down here. And in the daylight, uh, I also turned up the turbidity quite a bit. Okay, so I've just moved the camera, I changed the focal length, um, and I turned off that second light I put in just, just for this angle. 
and uh, I put the focal length to telly and I zoomed in a bit more and I think I got a little bit closer to that original look. I think it was much closer to the trees in that first render. Um, it is nice to do one a bit more pulled back. So if I do render out this scene, I might actually uh, do it a bit more pulled back. But in the project files for this tutorial will be this scene, uh, the original one and uh, a few others uh, as well that I've made. Um, and you don't need Forrester um, to, to mess with them. Um, so if you fancy going and checking those out in my store in general, that would be great. Uh, I hope this tutorial allows you to create more Scottish-like forests. Uh, these are the only forests I know. Uh, I've never seen non-Scottish forests, so um, maybe some English ones, uh, but honestly they look the same. Uh, so that's all for today's tutorial. Hopefully this allows you uh, to create some cool forests. I think the, the biggest takeaway here is the, the light behind them. Um, uh, adds uh, a really really nice realistic vibe. It, it kind of adds a bit of a CG vibe, it kind of looks like something you'd see in a CG heavy movie. I think that's all I'm going to go over regarding these tree renders. I hope you get some cool takeaways from them and there is an abundance of tutorials like this around the place. I definitely suggest if you really want to learn Forrester and cinema um, to check out David's, uh, David Ariev's tutorials because they taught me my entire workflow and I'm using that um, you know, a, a few years later uh, to produce and bring you this tutorial. Um, so maybe you can do the same thing. Uh, so thanks for watching. I'll be back next week with another tutorial. Be sure to check out my Instagram, my Facebook, all that jazz. Most importantly, myself, I check out my assets. And I'll see you in the next tutorial. Bye.